What's good artists, it's Curtis King of CurtisKingBeats.com here with another Artist Marketing 911. Artists, today we're gonna to talk about separating your personal music industry issues from the major label music industry issues. Now, if you've been an artist for the last 10 years, I'm pretty sure you've heard somebody say, for example, why are you in the music industry? There's no music to be made there. The major labels are losing all kind of money. Record sales are down. Streaming doesn't pay anything. I'm sure you've heard all of these things before. I know I've heard them many a times, but I never let that discourage me. In my mind, I always knew that major labels had a lot more people to pay. Their overhead is ridiculous. Their promotion budget, the PR companies they hire, the people that are in their actual office. We're not even talking about singers, songwriters, and publishers. They have so much more overhead. And when you have a lot more overhead, you're gonna need to be making a lot more money to actually see profit. So when you hear somebody in the music industry saying there's no money to be made, what they're actually saying is they can't cover their cost for operating business. What they're saying is that the amount of money that's coming in it's not turning a profit like it used to in the 90s or the early 2000s. They blame most of the issues on file sharing and people pirating music and people not buying music anymore. And for the major labels, that's a legitimate argument. For you, I have to differ. If you're an independent or an unsigned artist, you have a different set of issues. Most of us as independent artists, I'm not gonna assume for you, but for me, it's paying rent, it's paying my car note, it's paying my bills all through music. That being said, my cost for operating business are a lot lower. I'm not paying for studio time because I actually record from home. I'm not paying for artists to come record because I am the artist. I'm not paying for beats because I'm producing the beats. Now everybody's situation is not the same, but when you really think about the price it costs for you to maintain your business as an artist, you gotta start thinking about what it actually takes for you to get in the green. That being said, I wanna help you make a clear separation, a clear distinction between the business of the major labels and the business of you as an independent artist. Think for a minute, what are your needs? Do you have a payroll of 400 people? If not, your needs are a bit different. How much are you making at your job? If you were able to match that amount in music sales, would you not do it? If you gave it 100% of your attention, what if I told you you could cover that in album sales and streams, since it's relative to your needs? Now, when they talk about music streaming not being a reliable source of income and them paying cents on a the dollar, they're not lying, but they're not telling the whole truth. When it comes to music streaming and any other avenue that you have to get paid as an artist, it's worth looking into. Now, most people are not gonna have this mindset because most people are trying to ball out. Most people are trying to bank out. Most artists and most of your peers are not gonna see the benefit of taking these numbers and then doing something practical with them. But let's break it down in a real practical way. Let me break down what the music streaming payouts were and basically what that means for you and what you would have to stream in order to get paid this amount. Based upon numbers that were reported from these streaming websites in 2015, July, I'm gonna basically break down how you could have made $500 based upon those numbers. Now these numbers change all the time, they vary. So let's break it down. Now, I'm reading from paper right now because I couldn't remember these numbers to save my life, but this is based upon 2015, what these music streaming websites said that they paid out to the artist. Now, these numbers vary all the time, but based upon these numbers, this is how you could have made 500 bucks last year. Now, title, for example, at one point in time, they were paying 0.043. That's about four cents, correct? Now that's pretty high for a music streaming site and that was their biggest selling point was the fact that they pay so much to the independent artists. And that's something else to understand as an unsigned artist or as an independent artist, you get paid more per stream by not being a part of a label. Huh, fun fact. With Tidal at four cents, if you would have had 8,139 streams, that would have been 350 bucks for you. Google Play, now they paid about 0.0179 cents per stream. If you would have had 5,586 streams, that would have been another 100 bucks. Now you're sitting at 450. Spotify, they paid 0.007, which means that if you would have had 7,142 streams, it would have equaled out to 50 bucks. Now Apple Music, I love it, I love the platform, it's beautiful, I actually use it, but they don't really pay out too much, but it's still something, 0.002 cents per stream, and you would need 5,000 streams for 10 bucks. 
Now, you can put your nose up at $10, but I know a lot of folks right now, a lot of independent artists that are like, yo, that's gas money or that's Chipotle with some guacamole if I can get that. If I can get that off, yes, please, I will take guacamole on my burrito. So my general point of reading those numbers is this. Those numbers are something. Those numbers are relative to what you may have in terms of things that you need. So if you have a car note or if you have rent or you have the light bill, water bill, this is extra money that can help you. It can help you pay bills. And it can also be money that you reinvest back into your craft. It can be money that you don't even use for bills. It can just be money that now you have to invest into studio time, to invest into maybe a little home studio setup. But it's something. Don't overlook it because it's not their money, the major label money. They spend a whole lot more money as a major label. Therefore, they need a lot more money. So that being said, allow them to do their business. You do your business as an independent. I mean, even if you're getting paid 20 bucks a month from all of these websites together, that's 20 bucks that you can reinvest into business cards. That's 20 bucks that can be towards something that you really, really want as an artist. Just get yourself an opportunity to get paid. You're not going to quit your job and you're not going to make money not giving yourself opportunity to sell. I don't care if you're a new artist. Just put it up because you never know what happens in the future. You may have a song take off and people want to go to your back catalog and see how you started. Well, guess what? You make it available to them. So don't be discouraged by the music industry saying that albums don't sell, music doesn't sell. You got to do it. You have to do it because you have different priorities. And if that little bit of money could help you and go a long way, well, who are you to shake your head at that and walk away? That's extra money. 20 bucks may be a lease on a beat for you. You always hear them say, oh, there's no money in physical albums and physical copies. And yeah, has a sale of physical copies diminished over the years? Absolutely. In a major label music industry? Absolutely. When it comes to the independent grind, well, you got to know what your audience likes. There are producers right now that can sell their beat tapes on vinyl and people consume it. Why? Because their particular demographic just happen to be vinyl lovers. Find out what your demographic likes. Maybe they love having a CD. Maybe they love reading through the book. Maybe they're willing to pay for that. And I'll tell you right now, if you're selling a CD for five bucks, you sell 40 copies, that's 200 bucks. Now these numbers are not staggering to anybody within the major label industry, but for you, your goal, if your goal is clearly to quit your job and make money off of your music, well, don't overlook these opportunities to put some extra money in your pocket, reinvesting money, money to put into things that can become your assets. Basically, I'm saying open your mind up to other streams of income. Even if there's small pennies, those pennies stack up. I suggest that you read this book right here, The Slight Edge by Jeff Olson. Having this mindset of being willing to stack up pennies until you get to a million dollars, if you're willing to do that, one, it won't require you to actually stack up pennies to get to a million, but it's the mindset of building with the small and figuring out how to maximize upon the small. Most people want to just ball out. They want an album that goes number one on iTunes and then they can see the money from it. But I tell you, I was number 42 on iTunes and the first week it was 1700 bucks that I got from that. The first week sales was 1700 bucks. And at that time, that was more than enough that I needed to take care of my bills and to reinvest in the more physical copies for my album. Just things that I needed that I knew were going to be great for my long term success. And that's why I love sites like TuneCore, man. They make it so easy for you. I'm going to do another tutorial very soon on how to basically put your music and have it available on streaming websites and on these sites. It costs like nine bucks, 10 bucks, 10 bucks. Add an extra 10 bucks. They'll even go find your music on Facebook. So if you have a friend that posts your music on Facebook or on their YouTube, guess what? They'll go get you paid per play. Now, the cents on those are a lot smaller, but guess what? You're still getting some income for something that costs you 10 bucks. It's an investment in which you're gonna get your profit. In conclusion, independent artists, take advantage of the fact that it's just you and maybe a few of your homies, or maybe it's just you. Take advantage of the fact that you have low overhead. Take advantage of the fact that you don't require to sell goo gobs amounts of albums in order to maintain your household or to pay your bills. Maybe you have a job. Maybe this is just something that's additional income. That being said, at least you're taking the steps forward to making a living off of your music. But don't shake your head. Don't think that you're too good for two cents, four cents, six cents. Now, obviously, there are advocates out there that are trying to fight for independent artists like us to get more money. But at the same time, don't sit around waiting because your problems are your problems. When you lay your head down on your pillow at the end of the night, and maybe it's just you and your significant other, you're not going to have a conversation about what the music industry needs. It's going to be about what you need. It's going to be about what your family needs. That being said, continue to stack your pennies up until it's many.
I wish you success. These are my thoughts. I would love to hear yours. This has been another Artist Marketing 911, Curtis King of CurtisKingBeats.com. Play this every morning when you wake up. Oh, gosh, told me not to sing on this, but I promise you, I, I feel like mystical. Hey, come on, let me get this. Curtis King with two S's, beats.com. Curtis King with 2S's Beats.com.